replacing some indoor coils on some 360 ceiling cassettes at a restaurant where I did a leak check, I think a week ago. This right here is the first ceiling cassette we're gonna change the coil for. This is for the dining room area. And right here, I just unboxed the new coil. You can see it's in a circle. That is pretty cool. Got the plug for the EEV valve, and I've got my flare connections here. Pretty light. So we're gonna go ahead and take this one apart and go ahead and replace it. Something that's really important that you wanna have for all of your indoor units if you install a VRF system is isolation valves. Why? So that you can isolate the indoor unit that you're repairing. And then once you complete the repair, then you can open up those isolation valves and you didn't lose a lot of your refrigerant in the system. You didn't have to recover the refrigerant. So I'm pretty excited. The only thing I'll have to do is recover the refrigerant in this indoor coil, but we probably won't have any after I cut those valves off because it's leaking so bad. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those isolation valves off and we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off of this 360 ceiling cassette. Let's go. Here are the isolation valves for the piping that go to this indoor unit. I've got a port for each isolation valve that I can hook my gauges to, to vacuum nitrogen pressure test. And here are the valves. So you can see they're open and I am going to close these valves before I begin taking apart the cassette. Isolation valves are closed. So now I'm going to remove the filter and I've already take, taken the screw out for this panel. It says pull right here. So you can take this off and then remove the screw for the uh, cover for the control board. Now I'm gonna take my voltage tester, Tessman voltage detector. I don't have any voltage. That's a good sign, always check. We did turn the breaker off. I need to go ahead and Take my wiring loose, and that is my power and my ground. And then I need to take the F1 and F2. Make sure you pay attention to what is F1. It is polarity sensitive, so red is F1 for me, black is F2. screwdriver. I'm going to take, that should be the only screw it looks like. Excellent. I've got these little clips here. You just push and then this comes right out. Now I've got my plugs. Take my plugs off my display plug, my motor plug, float switch, condensate pump, get all those loose. Oh, it looks like I've got one more ground wire that's attached. All right, now I've got that out of the way and you want to make sure that you get a bucket because when you take the drain plug loose you may have some water come out and you don't want to be soaking wet right oh my I left my no way when I was up here the last time I left this in and there was just enough clearance for the fan to spin so it actually was working while I was gone I left my light in here Hey, I got my light back, guys. That's awesome. You ever leave something on a job or lose it? Then you find it later on. Let me know what it was and where you left it. But that's exciting. It's always exciting when you lose a tool and then you find it later on. All right, I'm going to put this somewhere where I won't lose it. And now, just so I have more room, I'm going to take the 
screw that holds the fan blade onto the shaft of the motor off. Make sure you got a couple crescent wrenches. Make sure you got a Phillips screwdriver and you can get this job done. I mean, we're almost there. We're almost to the coil. All we got is just these screws right here. Now, right here, I've got this little panel. You can take this out. It's got five or six screws in it. Looks like we got all the screws out of it. So... wire out of the way this is the wire for that indoor fan motor all right got that panel out of the way good deal any more screws doesn't look like it Before you take the drain pan down, you gotta take these four screws that say drain out uh, around the whole thing, but we need to take our wiring out. So our signal cable and our power cable, we gotta get. Before I take the pan down, I'm going to drain the water. Got the drain plug. Now, I'm going to take this drain pan down. Woo! I'm going to let it hang right there. Well, I thought we got all the water out, but we didn't. But hey, there's the coil. Now, I'm going to remove the two sensors for this indoor heat exchanger. There's one. Make sure you keep the metal clip. And then, there's the other one. All right, now those are removed. I'm going to remove the insulation for my flare fittings, flare connections. So now I got that exposed. Now I can loosen up these connections. Now I've got two brackets, Phillips screwdriver at the top that hold this coil in. So, I'm going to get my adjustable wrench, loosen the flare connections. I've already closed off these valves, so we shouldn't have any refrigerant in this coil. All right. All right, and there are the two pipe connections. Now, all we have to do is take that bracket out, boom. Let's loose. It's loose coil has been removed let me show you something pretty important for the removal process that you will definitely need to know hey there's the condensate pump right here Phillips screw and then this piece all right this is what your flare connections go through those two pipes that connect to the outside of the cassette take this off that way you can actually get that coil down because if you don't you're gonna have a hard time. All right. All right now. Yeah. All right. Make sure you have somebody to help you get this coil up here. Make sure you get it lined up the way it's supposed to go. Make sure you put the corner piece in. See, it goes right here. All right, got these connections loose. There's pressure, that's good. Means this coil is probably not leaking because they put, it, put nitrogen in it. All right, gotta make sure I put those EVAP sensors back in. 
Got the corner piece on right here. All right, putting those little EVAP sensors back in. I'm gonna make sure you have the metal clip because that's what holds it. Black sensor goes there, and then got my red sensor. All right, push that up in here. All right, good deal. Awesome. Now, before I tighten up the flare connections, I'm gonna install the flare mate made by New Calgon. So we are looking at, what is that, 3 8 and looks like 5 8 maybe? Okay. So here's our 3 8 and then this goes all the way up to 3 quarter. So. All right, installed the little flare mate. You can see it's tight on there. This one's pretty tight. Now I can connect my flare nut. All right. Now we're feeding the power communication cable back in. And it comes through here. And then I got to put my bracket on to tie these two cool ends together. But we're getting somewhere. If you take this off and you don't know how to get it back together, just look at this hole right here. This hole has to line up with where the wire comes in and the piping connections. So that's a good tip for you. I think I took off uh, one too many panels or panels that I didn't have to. Make sure you pay attention to the service manual. Also pay attention to where the drain plug is for the drain pan because this panel, you can see it lined up right here with this hole where the drain plug was. See this outer ring? To get to the screws to take the drain pan off, you have to take the outer ring off and you notice there are arrows. There are, th I think, three arrows or four arrows and they slide. Okay, they slide over the uh, little pieces that stick out that say drain. Now we're gonna put the cover on that includes a little control board. And you wanna pay attention to this little cutout right here, cause this should line up with your drain plug. And then you should pay attention right here because this is where our wires route through. Pieces that snap in, that's awesome. That's, that's great. Adding some nitrogen. Gonna go ahead and leak the test. Make sure my flare connections are good. Alright, now turn the vacuum pump on, start the micron gauge, and I've got the big boy hose hooked up to where my middle hose goes on my manifold. Go ahead and turn on the shutoff valve, open the ballast, gas ballast up. So safe to say we got a good deep vacuum and it didn't take long because we're just doing this coil here so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the pump off here in a minute and then open up those valves and then we'll go uh, replace the coil for the 360 cassette upstairs man I like this little pump upstairs about to start taking apart the second ceiling cassette here is the coil so I'm going to take that out of the box. Now that I know what to do, this should go a lot faster. So let's go. Now that I know how to take this one apart, we're going to fly through this.
screw. All right, this right here. Now yeah, plug it. Drain. Once the water's drained, you got four screws right beside where it says drain. On each corner where those little things protrude, it says drain where they are. Now, before we can take this panel off, we have to take our wires and we have to pull them through. So I need a filter driver so I can loosen up this. Uh... All right, loosen the nut that holds the wheel on. I'm gonna take it out of the way, then pull the wire out of this, the power wire, and then we'll take the drain pan down. All right. This is armored cable. Two. Go ahead and put your hand on that side. Definitely have two people to help. If you do YouTube videos, have three or four. My brother James over there too. He's watching. So now, be awesome. All right. Now it'll come down. Nothing hanging. All right. Except for our wires. This is right here is where we've got that armor cable. And I would like to take this off, but that armor cable's hanging on. Mm. Mm. Hold on before you let it go. Because I want to make sure I get this out the way. Oh, that's perfect. That's amazing. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy! All right, and she should be loose. All right, you can go ahead and take it down. Yes, sir. Got it, I got it. Brother James? Oh, we'll take those off. Okay. Take those off. Thank you, Brother James. All right, and that's how you do it in like five minutes. So, good deal. It took me like 35, 45 minutes the first time. And, uh, I was very happy, by the way. Every step of the way, I was super happy. So. <laughs> I'm having an issue and I need a tissue. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Brother James. Man, this, it can be tough. This can definitely be tough. Beautiful. Man, that's beautiful. Now I'm going to put that corner piece in. Chapow! Say you're proud of me. Proud of you. Yes. Corner piece. Take the corner piece out when you want to take the coil out. Put the corner piece back in. New coil is strapped in and ready to be covered up. So I'm going to put the rest of these panels on and go ahead and nitrogen pressure test, vacuum it, and then open those valves back up. Second one went together a lot easier because, well, I had some practice. Got brother Nick hooking up the nitrogen regulator. I'm gonna put some nitrogen on the system and then use the Navac cordless vacuum pump, which I'm doing a review, re review. I'm doing a review soon, so stay tuned. Got the vacuum pump going, pulling down pretty fast. Gauge is hooked up. Open the ballast, hits about 3,000, I'll close that ballast, so almost there, we'll see how long this takes, I bet you it won't be very long, alright, close the ballast, got the insulation back on, the flare connections, the isolation valves, wire ties, making it look neat, nice, beautiful. I hook up the S-Net, recharge both systems. Got the hoses hooked up. Got the tank ready. F1 and F2, S-Net tool, controller, turned all the units on cooling, 64, fan speeds on high. Now we need to exit the controller and see the position of the EEVs. EEVs, ah, I'm halfway open. Uh, two on the bottom, almost closed. 
Evaporator inlet is 47, 49, and 46. Evaporator outlet 77, 77, and 69. Let us run for 15 minutes. Temperature splits don't get close together. Within zero to seven, add some refrigerant. The outdoor unit data, low pressure, high pressure. Really cool to look at that. And then we've also got the outdoor unit cycle diagram. So we can look at compressor temperatures. We can look at the IPM temperatures. Really cool stuff here. All right, so we've been running for a little bit here with this first system with three units. And we've got room temperature of 85, 82, and 77. The evaporator inlet's almost the target, which is 45. But the temperature split you can see for each one of these is, you know, for the first one, you're looking at over 20. The second one you're looking at definitely over 20. And the third one over 20 degrees. So we definitely need some refrigerant. And our suction line temperature is 77. So that is not good. I'm going to go ahead and add some refrigerant. And then we're going to recheck it. Low side's 125. High side's 300. All right. Scales. Boop. Open it up, we're gonna dial this one in and then get the second one dialed in. Now I'm gonna let the other system run and while that one runs, I'm gonna go ahead and get this system started. So we are going to connect, we're on COM3. I've labeled all of my USB ports, so one's one, one is two, one is three. Got the green communication, little LED in the bottom right hand corner. That means we're gonna start populating some data all right now let's check the suction line temperature it is 72 now before it was 78 we added five pounds of refrigerant to this system and low side is 125 high side is 325 so we're going to wait and see what happens there's our four units it says fan speed is off we're going to go to the controller we're going to select all of these units we're going to click them to on click them to cooling run that temperature down oh you can hear some clicking happening and we're gonna take fan speeds to high all right excellent now exit that we're gonna let this system run back up to the 10 ton unit while I was waiting for the other one to kick on this one's 63 degrees for that suction line temperature so that's looking a lot better look at this EEVs uh, almost well about three quarter of the way open for each of those EEV valves and then we've got about a 10 degree split with the first unit we've got about a 15 degree split with the second unit and then we've got about a five degree split with the third so I think we need a little bit more refrigerant with this system but we're getting really close to being charged so that's very exciting so we're gonna add a little bit more Low side pressure for the 10 tons about 115. High side pressure is about 330. We put about eight pounds, eight and a half pounds almost, and the suction line temperature is 49. We've hit the sweet spot with this unit. Now I'm going to connect to the other unit and start charging. Then we'll go inside and check temperature splits. Connected to the 12 ton, you can see the fans are spinning very slowly, but these over here are rocking. So we know we're in good shape there. All right, we got our units, 46 and 73, more than 20 degree split. 46 and 74, 20 degree. 46, 76, that is 30 degree. And uh, then 51 and 77. So everything's more than 20 degree split. And EEVs are uh, less than halfway. So room temperatures, uh, 74, 78, 80, 80. All right. Definitely need to check the uh, suction line temperature, and then we're gonna add some refrigerant. All right, so suction line temperature for this system is 77. All right, got the gauges hooked up. Low sides 125, high sides about 275. And then I've already showed you evaporator inlet and outlets. More than 20 degree splits on those. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out we added about eight pounds to the other system 
So let's add some refrigerant. I got a bucket to sit on. I'm happy. Oh yeah. All right, so we got about a 10 degree split for uh, the first two and then about a 15 degree, well, 10 degree split for the next two. So we're getting close. Rim temperatures are looking a lot better. Suction line temperature is in the 50s now, so 59 for this unit. Low side pressure is 125. High side pressure is about 3, 2, 3, uh, 330. All right, and we've added about seven, six pounds. All right, getting close. All right, 43 and 47, 42 and 55, 45 and 62, 50 and 61. So we're still over 10 degrees. I think we still need some more refrigerant and the suction line temperature is getting pretty close to what the other one was. Right now it's at 50, but I think we need to add some more. Low side's about 110, high side's about 330. Pressures are almost what they were before. So, but let's see if we can get this a little bit closer. Suction line temperature of this bad boy is 30 degrees whoa look at that evaporator inlets 49 49 46 48 44 46 wow zero degree split two degree split and two degree split i'd say we good to go on this system now i'm going to disconnect and then reconnect to this one and check it out all right room temperature is getting close so we're in the 70s and then we've got uh, for the first unit eight degree split second one one degree third one seven degree and the fourth one one degree suction line temperature is 30 degrees for this unit so we're getting pretty close I'm gonna go ahead and take the controller and change the temperature before I disconnect to something a little more normal so where you at? Select. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back up. I'm gonna put it on about 68. That'll work. 